All right, thank you for coming uh, to this last session of the day. So uh, why should we care about uh, fast compilation at all? So fast compilation is important, especially for uh, just-in-time compilation. So our primary motivation is the databases where we get some queries from our user from some interactive tools. And uh, databases run the process large uh, amounts of data efficiently. So we often use LLVM as backend for a high quality compiler to get high performance code. But uh, we also need a fast uh, um, baseline compilation to get uh, started with processing data very quickly. And we cannot have add a separate backend or a, even roll their own backend as uh, JavaScript compilers do, because it's a lot of engineering effort and this uh, doesn't scale. Another motivation is developer experience, as we heard in the, the keynote in the morning. And what I will do in this talk is I will uh, go through the Ozero backend pipeline of LLVM that we currently have, analyze where compile time is spent, and outline some possible improvements. OK, so let's get started. Uh, the first step uh, of the LLVM uh, backend pipeline are some passes on LLVM IR. So these are typically 15 to 20 passes, depending on the uh, target architecture. For example, it lowers some constant intrinsics to actual constants, or expands atomic operations for operations that are not supported by the target, or expands some large divisions. On x86, for example, it also handles uh, lowering AMX types, which 99% of the programs don't use, or some score floating point conversions. And what all, pa all these passes have in common is that they look for some very simple IR pattern, and then we write it. and for this, we need to iterate over the LLVM IR, and this is not free. So around a single iteration over the LLVM IR takes about 0.3% of the backend compile time. Uh, so this is something which could definitely be improved. And we also know that many of these patterns occur very rarely, or in our cases, we know that we never generate them. So the passes are always run, and we always pay this tax, so we could probably uh, avoid this. Uh, either by merging passes with some shared infrastructure uh, for mat matching these patterns or to only run these passes when they're actually uh, required uh, by the source code at hand. Okay, and as you see, I will build up a, a bar at the bottom of the slide, which shows the distribution of the compile time for the individual phases. Okay, so the second step is uh, instruction selection, where LLVM IR is transformed into the SSA-based machine IR. And as you probably know, we have uh, three instruction selectors. So fast ISIL does this in a single step. Selection DAC does some graph-based rewriting. And global ISIL does some rewriting in a generic machine IR. Uh, and writes the IR also multiple times. And uh, as you see, the instruction selection performance it takes a big chunk, so this is over 30%. And it's only okay-ish if we stay on the happy fast ISIL path. So whenever we get selection back fallbacks, the performance suffers uh, quite a lot. And uh, also global ISIL, as uh, we only considered ARM so far, but on ARM it's also around two to three times slower than fast ISIL. So right now this is not a, a, good, a good replacement. So what could we do? Well, first of all, we could try to derive some single step instruction selection for global ISIL, uh, where we uh, don't rewrite the IR uh, that often. But in, every, in, in any case, I would ask to not uh, remove uh, fast ISIL prematurely until the global ISIL performance uh, has kept up. Okay, the next uh, big uh, chunk after instruction selection is uh, register allocation. So these are in fact uh, several passes. Uh, so first of all, we has, uh, allocate the stack slots when we destruct SSA, so replace the file nodes with uh, copy operations. Then we handle instructions that uh, clobber one of their sources. And then we do the actual register allocation. And for x86, we also need to do things like handling flag copies, which needs, is the only user of a dominator tree in the O0 pipeline, which is also not exactly cheap to compute. And also some things uh, almost nobody uses, like AMX tiles or the FPU stack. And yeah, these multiple revises of the IR are expensive and uh, take some time. So what could we do? Well, we could try to not rewrite a machine IR uh, that often. This would require a larger effort. It's probably not realistic anytime soon. OK. Uh, after register allocation, there are miscellaneous uh, changes and fix up. The most, the biggest one is the insertion of the prolog and epilog into the function, so saving call is safe registers, and then rewriting all the uh, uh, references to the stack using stack or uh, frame pointer. And then there are dozens of mostly target specific passes. So, for example, the add v0 upper on x86, or do some encoding optimizations, or work around some uh, uh, rata. Um, 
most of these passes are individually cheap and several of them do nothing at all in most cases, but this adds up nonetheless and this raises the question whether we really need all these passes or could we perhaps combine some passes or remove some of these passes. For example, at O0, we don't care about uh, in uh, code size optimization that compresses EVEX instructions to VEX. Yeah, so, uh, Reducing the number of passes uh, would uh, simply help uh, to remove this or to make this green uh, box at the uh, bottom a bit smaller. Okay. Uh, then there are uh, some other things. So for example, 5% of the time is spent in the legacy pass manager infrastructure. And I was quite excited to see that uh, at the end of last year, someone stepped up and uh, started part, uh, started restarted the efforts to port it back into the new pass manager. So this is uh, something I'm definitely looking forward for. And uh, this would also improve uh, compile times if we finally get this done. Uh, other things, so machine install at operand is quite expensive, three percent of the overall compile time. But there are also other things, for example, simply deallocating as in freeing the LLVM IR data structures is one percent, and another one percent is uh, simply freeing the machine IR data structures. So simply the heap allocation uh, costs some time, and this was uh, with uh, J malloc, not uh, glibc's malloc. And when uh, two percent of the time is uh, spent uh, for time measurements uh, to get the data. Um, yeah, okay. Um, uh, the last uh, pass of the uh, backend is the ASM printer, whose job is it uh, to encode the uh, instructions into machine code and then create an object file in our case, or it can also be a textual assembly, but it's rarely used in practice. And this, as you see, is a pretty big chunk for a single pass. And, uh, and this is particularly slow in x86. So what's happening? So first of all, every instruction is first transformed from machine IR to its MC representation, which is also this does some heap allocations, and only from there to machine code. And this, uh, this double conversion of every instruction uh, costs some time. The other thing is that it uh, supports uh, lots of hooks and uh, does uh, several virtual function calls uh, per encoded instruction. And uh, this uh, adds up, and this abstraction comes at a price. And another thing is, uh, for example, all basic blocks always get string labels, even internal ones, and even for object files, where these string labels are never ever visible. Yeah, so this is also something that costs some time uh, in hash map lookups, and uh, this could also be uh, improved. So reducing hooking points and uh, reducing the number of abstractions and going past for a little more integrated approach uh, could uh, substantially improve compile time. All right. Uh, and uh, for our JIT compilation use case, we are not quite done yet because we still need to uh, um, link this in ELF object value that we have no in memory uh, and uh, process relocation so that we can actually jump to it and execute it. And uh, yeah, pa first of all, generating this alpha only to parse it immediately afterwards again uh, takes some time. So for example, processing symbols uh, takes about 2% and another 4% are spent for processing the relocations in the ELF file. And this is not exactly necessary, but so we could, I envision it as an MC JIT streamer, as a third uh, streamer for the ASM printer, uh, where we compile directly to process memory and <coughs> uh, could, for example, while emitting directly resolve symbols or uh, keep fixups in a more efficient data structure when ELF relocations. And by focusing on a common subset, uh, many JIT codes don't use most of the features that ELF supports. Uh, this could also be a, a reasonably uh, doable uh, approach. Okay, so what are the key takeaways? So first of all, the goal should be to keep the number of passes in the zero pipeline low. So either by omitting them or by merging them, or maybe making the execution of some passes uh, feature sensitive and so that they only execute when they are required. Um, finish porting to the, the um, backend to the new pass manager would be great. Uh, also keeping a fast ISO-like instruction selector is uh, very important for fast compile times. And yeah, other things, uh, rewriting the IR is expensive, so both in LLVM IR as in machine IR, and iterating over the IR is also a thing that is not cheap. It, it does uh, has a cost some time. Um, and for JIT uh, uh, use case, a better integration of the assembly printer and the linker would also be a very good thing to pursue. Okay, so there is uh, one more thing. Uh, LVM is now over 20 years old and uh, accumulated a lot of features and a lot of abstractions over uh, this time. And most of the programs we compile don't actually need most of the things we support. And this raises the question, should we start over from scratch? Is it time to start uh, writing a new backend from scratch? And uh, to find out how far we could go, go we actually started doing that. And uh, we got a 10 to 20x uh, compiler speed up on when compiling the limited subset that Clang actually generates. 
Um, and we do this in just uh, three passes. So our talk at L the CGO workshop, at uh, the LLVM workshop at CGO, has a bit more details. And this shows that there is still quite a lot of uh, room for improving compile times of uh, LLVM IR. That's it from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you.